I usually read a poem to have people leave, but today that's a poem that called me and I want to read it so we can start. We are a tribe and I really feel that we are together here as a tribe. And it's from Alberto Rios. We plant seeds in the ground and dreams in the sky, hoping that someday the roots of one will meet the upstretched limbs of the other. It has not happened yet. We share the sky, all of us, the whole world. Together, we are a tribe of eyes that look upward, even as we stand on uncertain ground. The earth beneath us moves quiet and wild, its boundaries shifting, its muscles wavering. The dream of sky is indifferent to all this, impervious to borders, fences, reservation. The sky is our common home, the place we all live. There we are in the world together. The dream of sky requires no passport. Blue will not be fence. Blue will not be a crime. Look up, stay a while, let your breathing slow. No, you always have a home here. I just love that poem, Isabel. And it's, um, it feels like a very Charlotte poem. And uh, uh, it, it expresses something for all of us, but uh, for me it expresses also the spirit that Charlotte brings. I've, I've worked together with Charlotte as a, her mentor and as a collaborator for, I think it's been almost 15 years now or something, Charlotte. <laughs> it's amazing. And uh, Charlotte is one of those people who fell in love with Jane Jenlin's work and with focusing and uh, came to me and said, you have to do a training because I'm, I'm leaving New York and next year and uh, I need to be trained in doing focusing oriented therapy now. <laughs> she was the motivation for starting our four training, focusing oriented relational uh, therapy training. And, and Charlotte has uh, just grown and taught and thought and brings, uh, uh, such um, an amazing sensibility that's spiritual and scientific. Usually they don't go together. People are either the science kinds of minds or the philosophical, spiritual kinds of minds. And Charlotte brings the two, and it's such a wonderful combination in teaching focusing-oriented therapy. The, the very particular, practical, and the very expansive, large view of things. And she's, she's doing an amazing uh, FOT training online starting uh, in the fall that um, I would very, very highly recommend. I think there are a few places left, right? It, uh, it's a, a, a training where you really get individual help and uh, coaching and teaching and uh, quite amazing. So I'm thrilled to have Charlotte uh, with us this morning, and I'm thrilled to see to see all of you and to continue this process that keeps unfolding and becoming more and more collaborative and becoming more and more expansive. So welcome everybody, and uh, I'm thrilled to introduce Charlotte. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so lovely to see you all. Uh, I, I was here a, a few weeks ago, so thank you for having me again. And uh, I, I wanted to spend this time uh, just speaking a little bit and maybe giving us also an experience of what Jean calls shift questions and what I call forward movement questions. And in my uh, teaching of, of SOT, just, just surprised that uh, these are often quite uh, new to people and they're, and they're amazing, they're really powerful to use uh, in, when they're used at the right time, uh, either, either, by, either for yourself and your own focusing or if, if you're with a partner or, 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 with, or in your practice. Um, so 
So I'll just say a little bit about it and then we'll have an experience. We'll do an attunement and try them out. So uh, as, as many of us know, focusing comes out of Jean's revolutionary philosophy that starts from the perspective that what we are is interaction. What we are is interaction uh, rather than static, disconnected entities or, or things. And what we're made of is forward movement. That what we are is process. That we are a, a moving uniqueness. And this forward movement comes in shifts, in steps of opening and growth. Uh, and when we have the right relationship and distance with our experience, they come. And those shifts may go in a different direction from how we want them to go kind of upstairs in our intellects with our agendas. They, they come in their own way very organically. And so, so focusing isn't about solving problems. It's not a solution oriented problem solving thing, but problems do get solved as a byproduct of these shifting forward movements from these little shifts, sometimes big shifts and steps. And, and some of these are big and some of them are very small, but each one adds to and carries forward what came before and implies into the future, implies into the next. Right? So it's got past, present and future, all within that shift, all within that movement. And, and remember that, that Jean spoke about like two main dead ends in the therapy process that he found in, in the research that he did. Uh, the clients who just talked about their issues, but didn't really feel them, that was one dead end, and those who just kind of emoted in a cyclical way, right? So it was the, the same angry or the same sad or, or even the same positivity. It was those clients who could be curious and open and who could slow down and sense into the subtle feeling sense of their issue and then symbolize what came there, find the handles. Those are the people who moved and changed. So, so this way of relating to your experience, this, this way that changes and moves, means that these small shifts and, cha and, and uh, changes and steps can come, but they come from the whole of how the person has their issue, not just from the thinking and not just from the feeling. It's the all of you, how the all of you has it, because we are this interaction, what we're made of is interaction. And so we're in interaction with all these levels in ourselves and with our situation and our culture and goes out and out and out. Um, and each focusing movement we make brings something new. And the focusing attitude is really important here. Having an open curiosity about our experience. And if there isn't just a, even just a little bit of interest, but, but the felt sense and the shifts don't come. That's very uh, core, that's very uh, central to focusing is the focusing attitude. And what's so lovely is when we focus, it brings the focusing attitude to, it kind of brings a, an, a, a further curiosity and an opening. So that when we, when we uh, have this curiosity uh, and slow down, we can facilitate right we can make invitations to slow down we can make invitations to ourselves and to others to sense inside what comes here but we can have we can make invitations to be curious to be interested in what comes and and can we be with the whole of something here so we can slow down and make those invitations to ourselves and then we have the naming when we slow down and we keep something company. And when we name something, when we find those handles, that that brings a shift, even if it's very small. Um, and once the experience is identified and named, then we can recognize it. We can keep it company. 
then we can find the right distance, not too close and not too far. We could uh, acknowledge it and sit down beside it and keep company with it without it having to change. And we may even shift into its perspective right, to understand what it's like from its point of view is something, there's somebody that's come from the underneath, that's been invited with our openness and our attention and our pause. And each movement that we make brings something new. And so we also have these uh, wonderful, powerful, magical questions. Uh, that Gene brought these questions to, to us. He called them shift questions. And I like to call them forward movement questions. And, and we use these questions, particularly when we want to get to the heart of something and when we want to go deeper when we want to open something further, to really get to the heart of it. Because these questions, they're targeted to the forward edge, to the center and the forward edge of what's emerging. These questions really get to the heart of the matter. That They get to the crux and then they open it, just like with a lock and a key. It can be very, uh, so facilitative. Um, so one kind of uh, shift question or forward movement question is when you're grappling with something and you're laying out your issue, right? And your, your issue may feel, you might feel so dense about it and so flummoxed by it, or it may have so many strands that you feel it's just, oh, there's just too much to untangle, it's just too much there. But, but if you ask yourself or, or the person that you're guiding or you're with, like, what, what's the worst of this? Right? What, what's the worst of this? Or what's the crux of this? Or what makes it so dot, dot, dot? What makes it so angry? What makes it so heavy? Or what makes it so jittery? These are all very similar questions. What's the worst of it, the crux of it? What makes it so dot, dot, dot? You'll handle words. If you ask yourself or somebody else that, then it's really quite hard to stay in your head. But it's like there's an implicit invitation here to, to turn inwards and to sense the whole of it, right? To be able to answer that. And, and as you do that and sense in there to the crux or the worst or the best, what, what happens when you keep that company is a deeper point, a deeper point that kind of brings it all together, right? That's kind of like, that's central to the whole of how you have it start to emerge. And that takes you right to a place where you go in, right to a spot. And it takes you right to the, as well as taking you to the spot, it's taking you to the forward edge of what's coming, right? Um, I, I almost feel like sometimes, I, mean, I guess it's different for each of these, it's almost like a funnel. Things suddenly, a, a, a point comes, a deeper point comes, it's almost like a funnel, and then you're really, takes you right deep into the process and it starts to move. So, um, uh, someone called Jim Iberg talked about the, uh, uh, like it's, it's like a birth. There are three, he, he did some research, and he, uh, his, his, he made it analogous to birth. So you've got pre-birth, birth, and then post, when the baby's being passed around, you've got the newborn. Uh, you've got the, the pre-birth contractions post-birth. Post and so these shift questions can really can be part of the birth canal, getting you in the birth canal and shifting you through. Uh, and th those particular questions are like getting the head engaged. That's what it, it feels like to me. Really, really like... Uh, the way Jim Jim has it there. Um, so so those questions really help you get to the crux as you're putting something together, right? And they can be asked at any point actually during your during during your focusing. They're particularly useful but when you're when you're laying something out and finding your place to go in. Uh, and then then there are another set of forward movement questions which are helpful later. Right? These are these are much later in your session. 
and it's important that they're later. <clears throat> and they come uh, when you have a, a well-formed felt sense, and they can even be after the birth, when you've just got your newborn. And, and these questions are, what does it need? What does it need? Jean used to say, which way is fresh air? And what he meant by that was, what, what are the next steps? Which way is fresh air? His way of putting it. Um, and another question he had was, how would it be in your body? How would it feel if this whole thing was all okay? There's another one he, he, he had. So you can see how these questions are good questions, but you don't want them too early because they could easily take someone into their head and into their problem, problem solving, into thinking. So they're important to come, if, if at all, much, much later. When you when you really got a well formed felt sense and or or when the birth has happened, and and you and you hold them lightly whenever whenever I ask what does this need or uh, which way is fresh air, I always maybe ask someone, can we just hold that over here for a moment? Let's just let's not let's not have the question crash in on us. Just just hold it there because it may not be ready. So trusting the person's felt sense about whether whether those are ready or not is because often something needs to really have time and carry forward before it's ready for those questions, but they can be really helpful. Um, so I would love us to have uh, an experience of this. And I'm gonna be using all those questions all together. So I'm gonna be throwing everything in, right? So some are gonna hit and some are not. So we're just, we, this is just in the spirit of play. We're just experimenting here. So we're just going to do an attunement and then I'm going to ask each of these questions that we're just like tapping to see if any of these bring something. Um, so maybe just, just finding your own way of settling in. Just kind of getting comfortable there in your chair. We'll just be doing this for maybe five minutes or so. And just turning your attention inwards in the, in the way that works for you. And maybe, maybe just noticing your breath as a way of kind of bringing you into the present and letting your breathing center you. Maybe just letting your awareness come down in its way into your throat and your chest and your belly. And if that's hard, just noticing what's hard about that. Maybe you're tired or distracted or Whatever's there, it's just a noticing how you are. Just noticing the weather inside. And just as you're settling there, just maybe taking a moment to think about something that you feel kind of stuck with. Just a bit stuck with, doesn't have to be a big thing. Notice a, something that you feel stuck with. And if a couple of things come, see if you can just settle with, with one. And as you notice and hold that something, just what comes in your body there? In your palpable feeling sense. Just noticing if there's somewhere that's a bit tighter or heavier or fizzier or
just your sensing in there with your stuck thing. Just like what are maybe the word, is there a word, the qualities of that? Just noticing the qualities. And maybe there's a word or words that might just fit how that is, seeing if something comes there. Maybe an image comes there. Maybe a metaphor or a gesture or a posture. And anything that comes, you're just resonating that back with your feeling sense to see if there's a, a sense, a feel of a fit, there's a yes inside. Like a clicking in somehow. It can be subtle, but you know when something fits. Maybe even a memory comes from this place, maybe not. Do you hold this something that's there, that's coming, come, do you hold it there and just keep that company? Just being with it, with an open curiosity if that's possible. You sense there, maybe just trying to ask what makes it so dot, 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 and whatever your words or phrase or images, what makes it so dot, dot, dot? We're just asking that question, no pressure. Just laying that out, seeing if there's a response. What makes it so dot, dot, dot? Or what's the worst of it? See how that question lands. Just holding that question. Again, no pressure. Doesn't have to go anywhere. Just playing here. What's the worst of it? Or what's the crux of it? the worst of this whole thing, it's the crux of this whole thing. Okay, I'm going to tap a little further here. Let's try, what does it need? And remember, no pressure here. Just seeing if something comes, and it really may not. Just experimenting. What does this need? What does this whole thing I'm with, what does it need? And if it doesn't feel right, just push that question, just put it to the side. does it need? And another question we can just try is which way is fresh air? Again, no pressure here. We're not pushing. We're just seeing if that brings something. Which way is fresh air with this whole thing if we keep it company?
which way is fresh air? And just our last one, what would it feel like in your body if this was all resolved? Again, doing this lightly, okay? It may not be right for you right now, but it's, it's just try it out. What would it feel like in your body if this whole thing was all resolved? How would that what would your feeling sense, your experience be? Let's just let something come if it does. Not a magical thinking thing here, it's a seeing what comes naturally in your body. And then just taking a moment to notice what came and then just coming back to the room in your own time. There's no hurry. Yeah, so how was that? Anybody want to, yeah, did something come? Did something go doing and jar? Well, first of all, Charlotte, of course, I'm reminded of your lovely, gentle uh, quality of your presence and your guiding, which mm -hmm. is, uh, I'm sure everybody felt. Just one little tiny thing to add, which I thought came to me toward the end when you asked what would naturally come in the body. It reminded me of um, William Hernandez's natural pause. And uh, I, I've always sort of been struck by his use of the word natural with pause, not a forced pause, not a contrived pause, not an autumn. Uh, that would be a contradiction, an automatic pause. But uh, we are routinely programmed to respond, not from the body, but from how we're programmed socially. So a natural pause invites body to just pause in its own mm -hmm. natural way mm -hmm. and I felt that very compatible with what you were describing mm -hmm. yeah. for me the surprise was when when you when I tried the question how would it be if this all were resolved uh, because I'm working with uh, procrastination habits mm -hmm. and then what came was fear so it was oh. like, like oh because I think that the assumption is if it's all resolved, I would feel better. That's interesting. The surprise was if it were all resolved, I would actually be very scared. Yes. Oh, gosh, yes. And that, make, I can, that makes so much sense, too, in a way. It's a surprise. Then there's the challenge once the procrastination is over. That's a great discovery. Like yes. The, the choice is to actually be willing to feel the fear. And I think that's what I'm struggling with. Totally relate. That was so beautiful. And um, yeah, I guess what I want to point to, it's actually what's been so new for me today is to have the distinction that you made between sooner shift questions and later shift questions. Mm. I really, I really liked the way you, you pointed that out. And then it's, of course, it sounded pretty obvious, but uh, I've, I've never actually, yeah, thought about that so specifically. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Pam. And as you say, you know, once you say it, it's like, oh, of course, but it's not necessarily something that you put together. I only started putting it together when, uh, because in teaching my, my course, I do individual sessions with all the students first. Mm -hmm. Those sessions are transcribed and then I go through them to see the kind of moves that, I made so as a teaching 
And, and in going through those, I, I noticed that about the shift questions. And I also actually noticed that I often, in, 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 the, in what I was doing, may only ask one shift question per, yeah. per session. And it was pivotal. Yes. I only, need, I only needed to ask one. Mm. Yeah. So thank you for that delicacy of, of making that distinction. Mm. Mm -hmm. I loved what people just said. I felt that um, the incremental shift questions were important because I usually jump ahead to a satisfying conclusion. And what happened was the fear and terror came up early on. And mm -hmm. I knew that to get through this particular block, I was thinking about I, the, the image I had was like, you know, hurtling myself over a 20 foot brick wall or something. But by the end of it, um, the, the piece around what would it feel like if this was somehow resolved was um, I was surprised to find both lightness and terror in the same moment. And then it was like, mm -hmm. I had to, I, I couldn't go on. But then I remembered about the curiosity and I thought, well, next time you know, keep it going. But there was a point at which I felt I couldn't keep moving. So, thank right. you. Oh, there was a, that, sorry, there was a point that you felt you could keep moving? I, I couldn't because I felt like I was, you know, gonna crash somewhere or uh -huh. some horrible, you know, accident would occur. And then I knew that was the place that maybe needed to be further pivoted or addressed, but it was like waking yeah. up from a bad dream when you're just at the point when the monster is going to eat you. So it was sort of like that. Right. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so again, the, that, that surprise of finding the lightness and the terror at the same time. Yes. Yeah. What a surprise. And it's kind of, it feels like it's kind of given you this kind of, um, it's joined something up. It's given you a glimpse of something quite, that is surprising. When you say it feels like this 20 foot wall and it's not quite like that it's actually like something else but it feels like it's kind of giving you a place that you can work to and move to without it just being this void or this impossible wall mm. yes yes thank you so the the fresh Hi. point or the fix you know i just reached my hand out and then someone reached back to me because before that, I felt, you know, no, no one is going to be there or whatever, you know. How beautiful and how powerful that, like, you know, we, we all get so, when our stuck places, that there are a whole bunch of reasons to what for why we're stuck, why it feels like this dead end. And it does feel like this unknown. And what you guys are saying is in that, in that experience is in being able to shift to how would it be if it was all okay or fresh air. It, it kind of fills in the, it fills something in there. Right? And, and in these really surprising ways and gives us that, the bridge to the next. And, and what a lovely discovery that there are ha there's a hand to reach out to you. Even when you start with somebody, the, the very first step of being able to just focus on one thing or to identify that this is where you're stuck at is hard. Mm. So you need, does one need a lot of practice just to get to that point? I know about the clearing of the space and all those steps, but mm. if I start a new person, if I start a new, new person that I work with, but to get to that point is hard sometimes. Yes, and, and each person is different, uh, but, but I find that, uh, again, it depends on your practice, whether you guide somebody in or you're having a focusing conversation, um, but, but often if someone comes with trouble with a situation or an issue, mm -hmm. just asking them to lay it out, to, 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 to lay out all the difficulty of it, mm -hmm. right, and, and then Often once, the, once it's laid out, some people have to lay a lot out, some people don't have to lay out so much, just to ask, that, use those invitations. Oh, what comes here? When, when, when all of that, when, when da, 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 when you're with that, what comes here? 
Mm-hmm. And there'll be, and sometimes people will say, oh, that I'm tight or I'm anxious. Some people go, what, what are you talking about? You know, and I say, well, you know, when, when, we, when, we, when we have something that's troubling us, often there's just something that comes inside. And I say it could be, something might be tight or heavy, or it might be, it might be anxious here, or it comes differently. You know, I, I might kind of model it myself. And then someone might go, go pause and go, oh, you yeah, I do feel kind of tight here, I guess, you know, and that, and now you've got some place you can start. So it's, mm-hmm. oh, what kind of tight is that? Like, is that the tight of a knot, or is it the tight of a, a totally, totally um, stretched piece of rubber? I mm-hmm. get quite descriptive, and I start priming the pump, and I go, oh, it's not like either of those. It's just like a tight little ball, like a little creature that's curled up. Then they can start using their own, and now you're off, right? Mm-hmm. Now you can start opening it. What are the feeling qualities? Where is it in your body? What comes to you when you hold that? One of the other times that that comes. There's lots of ways, places you can go with that. So I was just noticing, and and I had done the meditation, or the focusing on being in this group and how difficult that is for me to speak up so it was so it's so easy for me to do the zoom because then i'm not really in the group (laughs) Mm -hmm. but to put myself in uh is just uh a challenge and and that's really what that that's kind of the purpose of my speaking right now is Mm -hmm. just to be part of this group and to say that the uh the focusing actually uh, was very interesting. You know, I could see how much uh, fear does come up too at the end. Thank you for speaking up and coming into the group. And what's so lovely and it's all the faces. I know it comes up differently for different screens. You're right in the middle. You're oh. flat bang right in the middle. The thing that, uh, that happened for me at the end, there was a particular kind of um, image and a particular... Um, role that I um that I saw it was a the role was an includer and Mm -hmm. then at sort of moving from not feeling included to being included and then becoming an includer and it felt congruent but it didn't have I, I didn't have much yet in the way of the body feel of it all so would have been at, um, to go for myself, to go further would be something like, well, what would be best about that? To go to a, another crux question. And I'm mm-hmm. saying that and I'm asking you, does that make sense? To go, okay. you know, like, all right, here's something and that's something. And then mm-hmm. is that it? Yeah. And what would be best about that to go further still? Mm-hmm. Yes, well, you could experiment with that because that sounds interesting. Uh, that would be something interesting to try what that brings. And I don't know if there's a way you can try it uh, uh, in your dyads because mm. so that, so you get the image and, the, and, and just a sense of the role of you included and as an includer, right? So, uh, but not much of a body sense. And so why don't you experiment and if, if that feels right to you and, and check in with us at the end because you may want to try that and does that bring something and it may mm. well do if it doesn't then just maybe hold what would the body sense of being an includer be like and and just maybe just try the two and just see what happens there well that's interesting to, to have another um question there. You see, uh, in therapy, you have the, the comfort of being on a one-to-one situation. But when you get into social justice, you really are trying to solve problems. Mm. And, and your initial thing was you don't need to solve problems. You need to get, and I do understand how the self, the first, one has to read what's going on with the other person and with mm. in general mm. before in order to make 
meaningful discussion. Mm. If you if you're sort of you know spouting off where you're coming from, it's not gonna gonna do much. You have to be able to mm. listen. Mm. And and in focusing, that's what I've also just you know found. I'm a much better listener and a much mm. better reader of what's mm. of where people are coming from, what mm. what they're saying. In terms of uh, social justice, uh, it's so complex, isn't it? And how each of us have something, the assumptions that can be made and how things get polarized. And it's in the deep listening that the whole of how someone has something can come. If we can listen to the implicit intricacy of the what's coming next within that dialogue and in that conversation, then, then there's a there's a way it can move forward, even in a of and sometimes best with a conflict, as long as there is that listening to what's trying to move forward underneath. Jean saying that implicit within every human experience, no matter how dysfunctional it may seem, there's an inherent forward movement, something trying to happen. I think what the the thought I have about what about that social justice of solving problems. It's more about getting to that outcome. And I think to, to really pay attention without that usual solving problems, I think there's a possibility for an outcome that we don't know yet what it's going to be. I am just sort of want to zero in on that, what solving problems could mean. Let's see if I get this right. Like it's when you're solving problems in the more traditional way that 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 those are already kind of like entities. You know, you know how Jean talks about those. They're they're already formed. They already have their um, sharp lines in a way, right? And but when you listen in the way that we're talking about, you're really allowing them more to come in a very organic way. And, and that, that that can bring a shift, which can then change our concepts and the way we have something. That when, we, when we're trying to solve a problem, we have things in a very kind of certain, kind of predefined, predetermined way. But does that speak to that, Robert? Yes, that's... Yes, yes. Again, yeah. I was just reporting what, what, uh, how, the me how those meanings came up in me as I was listening mm. to the conversation. Mm -hmm. New right. concepts right. and new possibilities can come. Right. That a lot of time that's yeah. the problem solving is really very goal oriented. Mm. And I know in myself, if the goal is too defined, sometimes it gets too rigid, the whole process. Right. And, right. and, uh, and then I think it's, it's already a lot of how it should be. Yeah. And I think the way you use that, not necessarily do the problem solving, was actually relaxing into a curiosity mm. and a little less attention on how it should be. Mm. But it really took it out of that how it should be into the space, the relaxing down into and the space for something different to come. I always love the question, what does this place need? And for me to bring that, and, and it's something that you give in, in, in your presence, but it's, it's also something to bring in is that gentleness around the issues because where I'm stuck or whatever may be coming up, if it feels tight and tense and stuck, if I don't have a caring presence with it or a gentle presence with it, it just, I don't know, somehow it just frees it for me. So, and gives it care. That gentleness and care, it brings a whole different something. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different thing when we hold it. The gentleness and care, so important.